Um, but now we have low supply and low demand. So that is a completely different scenario. So, you know, people that are selling now, they're going to be, they're either going to have to sell or it's a, you know, a must sell situation. Um, so it is going to be a little bit different on the selling side, but it's going to be even less inventory. And we still have, you know, a certain amount of buyers out there. So next slide. So first we can talk about new listings in Southern California. So that's been dropping, obviously. Um, this is Southern California, which includes the five counties. So if you look as the COVID got more real, um, it, it, listings have gone down. You see a little bit of a tick up from March 29th to April 3rd. Again, those are probably sellers that are more, they have to sell. It's more of a have to sell. Um, so that's one thing we're seeing. Next slide. Yeah, today I just checked the MLS. You know, we do have an on, on average about like 200-ish, you know, new listings, you know, uh, since like yesterday. So that's pretty typical right now in the 200 range for new listings. It's not a lot in Southern Cal, to be honest. Okay, next slide. So this is kind of a breakdown by county, LA, Orange, Riverside, San Bernardino, San Diego, Ventura. I mean, as you can see, everybody's kind of doing the same thing. It looks like Orange County's picked up a little bit more as far as um, new listings, but still we're kind of in the negative here going, going into uh, post April 3rd. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Great. So part of it is sellers are holding back from selling. Um, when you ask if sellers are holding back, when you ask agents, they're saying that more and more are holding back from selling. Now, this only goes to March 30th, and I'm assuming this is the state of California, but we can see that sellers are concerned. Obviously, they're not going to want to put their home on the market if people are coming in and touching things, and, you know, there's there's definitely some fear there. So So that's one part of it. People are just holding back from even listing right now. Next yeah. Slide. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say that, yeah, I'll, yes, some sellers are holding back and people, if people are using those Zillow sites, I just want to let you know sometimes the dates, you know, that uh, the days on the market are not the same as the MLS right now, because right now for our system, we actually freeze the days on the market. So whatever you see on Zillow's might not, you know, match up with our, uh, the numbers in our system. So so that's one thing. And then the, on hold status, you know, you may be able to see some of the properties that's on hold, uh, you know, because right now some sellers are afraid of the COVID-19. They are able to hold the properties to basically uh, up to 30 days in some even like uh, 60 days. So there are a lot of those happening in, in the market right now. Okay. Um, and then the other part of that is sellers are taking their homes off the market. So again, you can see in 44% uh, have removed their homes from the market. And that is some of those are holds. So what they were doing is just taking it off the market temporarily to see what was gonna happen. So that's another thing that's affecting the decrease, the additional decrease in uh, listings. Next slide. Um, so here is kind of interesting. So here's the demand side. So showing activity has dropped significantly. Um, obviously, it's starting to pick up a little bit. So, um, so that's a good thing. I mean, we probably will see it pick up, but not quite as much as it was. Um, it looks like Kathy has a question. Okay, holding, waiting to stabilize or holding, and we expect not to relist if it drops enough. I don't know how much prices are going to drop. Um, they're holding, waiting to see if the COVID thing stabilizes. I don't think they're necessarily waiting to see um, as far as prices changing. I don't know, Cindy, what do you think about the prices changing? Uh, prices, to be honest, you know, we do see a little bit of price decrease, but not a lot because, you know, it depends on the types of properties that you're talking about. Uh, is, Ka is Kathy going to sell or is Kathy going to buy? So what, what, uh, what side is she asking the question for? Because some sellers I, are on hold I, I, to buy. Uh, it's because they're hoping that, you know, put in a hold, you know, somebody uh, that is willing and able and can buy at the price point that they're wanting, you know, to sell. So if, if you're buying some of the en entry level um, first home, starter home properties, I don't see a lot of big price changes in those kind of properties uh, you know, because competition is still out there. 
So based on our past experiences, you know, for a starter home, we still talking about at least, you know, five, six, you know, uh, offers. Sorry. And just to, just to confirm, what are you talking about starter home price point? Cause I, I would assume I'm a starter home, but it's not a starter home price point. Okay. So, uh, starter home price point is usually, I would say, I would put it around like, you know, in 800 and below. Okay. No, I'm looking closer, like, and this isn't like right now, this is probably like six months down the line, but I'm looking at like one, three, one, four. Oh, okay. One, three, one, four. Okay. But so, it's also, I'm also like a specific niche area, but like, I'm, I'm more so curious, like, do we think, are people holding because they hope that they can continue? It sounds like they're holding because they hope they can continue to get the price that want. point that they like wanted originally. But do we actually think that's reasonable? Do we think that when we come out of COVID, that's going to actually be the case? Or do we think that's going to change? So... I, yeah, I think it's going to I think it's going to uh, pretty much stay the same. I mean, there is about a 12 month lag from prices coming down because a lot of sellers, they call it sticky pricing. They have a price point where they want to sell at, but for whatever reason if there's interest rate changes or or things like this, it's usually about 12 months before sellers start to price their homes lower where prices start falling. So, we probably I wouldn't think we would see it this year, maybe in the in the the fall, the end of year. But again, that's really going to depend on, um, that's going to depend on a, on a couple of different factors. And um, one thing I did want to point out, shoot, and I just lost my train of thought. It, well, with different price points, so below 700,000, it's a totally different market than above a million and a half. Yes. So that is definitely something that is part of this whole, you know, situation. If you're over, you know, even a million, there's, there is more and more inventory on the market for sure. If you're below 700, it's really tough. It's still super tough. Yeah. And then I also want uh, Diane to actually talk a little bit about the lending for a high balance yes. uh, loan, because, you know, uh, I'm sure the rules and regulations has changed yes. quite a bit for a high balance loan limit. Jumbo. Yeah. So, and then, um, uh, I'll, I'll let uh, Diane talk about, is it more difficult to get a high balance loan right now? And how's the interest rate for a high balance? All right. Um, um, is it my turn to talk, right? Yeah, go ahead. You know, because <laughs> right. Welcome, sure. everybody. I just uh, want to introduce myself. So uh, my name is Diane. I've worked with Chrissy for a long time and I've known Cindy for a while. And I've been doing loans since 1989. And if you could remember that other slide that was, uh, uh, Chrissy was showing you what happened in 2007 and 2008, I was in the midst of that. Mm -hmm. So uh, just uh, piggybacking on that first before I tell you what it is now. So back then, you know, um, since I started in 89, the rates were like eight, nine percent, 10 percent rates at that time. So after, Okay, when, when we started uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, 2008 fall, nobody was lending. The reason why it is like that is because we did liar loans. Now, if you remember that people are qualifying with no down payment, they're only qualifying with their good FICA score and it's all 100% financing. So that uh, uh, situation is not the same as what we're facing right now. At that time, the interest rates were shooting up, down, up, down. It was so unstable and nobody was lending. Okay. And there, about the first six months after the Black Thursday that we funded all the loans and retracted all those loans, meaning unfunded all those loans and it did not close. There's a ton of loans that are actually, they, the other buyers that are actually thinking they're going to move into their home and they didn't. So now we go to this COVID. So this is a, a, a global, it's a pandemic. It affects the whole country, you know, and it's actually, it's, there's, a, there's a medical issue with this. That's why it's affecting, you know, it's a pandemic. So now, right now, okay, just to give you an example, before COVID uh, uh, started, I was doing a ton, a ton of refinancing because the interest rate were like below 3%. So right after we got shut down, so that was March 15th, when we got shut down, mm -hmm. the interest rate shot up so high and I was almost a full point. So I was coming out of a low three and it went to like four, four and a half, four point eight seven five. And that's not only for the high balances. So for you to understand a different uh, 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 tier in loans, there are three uh, uh, major uh, loan balances that caps. So the first, it's called a conforming loan amount, LA County, the conforming is from zero to 510,400. 
So that's your that's your cutoff is 510, 400. It's called a conforming. Anything above that to 765, it's called a high balance loan. That's like what Cindy was telling you about. That's where all the problems are now. You know, the interest rates are very tough to get. Right. So we have the high balance. And then after that, okay, comes your jumbo loans. This is what Kathy is now talking about, which is anything above 765 to at least 2 million. Okay, I'm gonna cap it to two million because I can't get a loan right now with anything above two million. Okay, now the conforming loan amount is actually securitized by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Okay, conforming up to 510, 400, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac from 510 to 4, 510, 400 to 765, it's still a Fannie Freddie. However, nobody's purchasing those loans anymore. Anything above 510, 400, the rates are very static. No, nope, you know, so let's say, for example, right now today, I just priced a loan that's $630,000 in San Bernardino County. It's a four unit. Okay. I have a borrower who's owner occupied. So he's going FHA and the maximum loan amount in FHA four unit is higher than uh, it's about 800, 900,000. I'm giving him a three and a half percent down payment because it's FHA. Guess what the rate is? You would not believe this. I was shocked. It's 3%. 3% because the loan amount is within the conforming, okay? Now, I went to a high balance loan, so I was trying to see what the high balance will give me on this one. This one is giving me at least 4.5%, okay? So you see the difference in, 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 in payments? So because the higher uh, loan amounts are more riskier for the secondary market, they can only afford, okay? So what happened is, I don't know if you know how the rates are derived from. Okay, the rates are derived from bonds. So if the bond market is losing money, guess what's going to happen? Interest rates go up. Okay, you know how people are saying that, oh, you know, the Fed, uh, Fed funds just dropped to 2%. You know, what's my rate now, Diane? Okay, well, you don't look at the Fed funds because the Fed funds rate is what the rate that the big banks are getting from the Federal Reserves. So then the bank have to make money on the on, on the money that they borrow, right? So they can't give you the 2% that they're getting from the Federal Reserve. So they have to adjust their interest rate in order for them to make money because they have to lend the money to the consumer like us. So in short, okay, the high balances right now and the jumbo loans are struggling, okay? Doesn't mean that I cannot do those loans. We can still do those loans, but it is cream of the crop. When I mean that is that you're like going through a needle in a haystack. You have to be an A paper. You have to have your job in line. You have to make sure that your FICO score is there. Just to give you an example, across the board, and it's industry guideline, every single lender right now, minimum loan amount on FHA, I mean, I'm sorry, minimum FICO score on FHA is 640. I used to be able to do loans at 580 FICO before COVID. Now, across the board is 640. Anything above the conforming, 510 to 4, 510,400, FICO score has to be between 660 to 680. Okay, 660, you get a, uh, you know, a shitty rate, excuse my language, 680, you get a better rate. So now let's talk about the jumbo. For Kathy's sake, anything above uh, 765, Kathy? you're gonna to have to have a minimum FICO score between 680 to 720. Most likely the best bet is a 720 FICO because now your debt to income ratio is relaxed. When I mean a debt to income ratio is what the lender has given you as a, uh, as a guideline in order for you to qualify. So debt to income meaning your debt divided by your income, okay, cannot exceed 45%. That is on a conforming. So that's across the board. So if you come to me and say, Diane, you know, do I qualify? And then I, I, I do your calculation. So it has to be 45% of your gross earning cannot exceed your uh, principal interest tax insurance and your um, debts. So if you have, so let's say for example, easy math. Say, Diane, I make $7,000 a year, uh, $7,000 a month, okay? $7,000, what you do is divide it by 45%, right? So your mortgage cannot exceed, okay, seven, did I say 7,000? Okay, divided by 45%. You cannot have a mortgage, no, that's wrong, hang on. <laughs> okay, 
well, your mortgage cannot exceed what seven is it? What seven thousand dollars? Forty-five percent of that. Okay, it's thirty-one hundred. So clear, you know, and that way you know. So oh, Diane, I make fifteen thousand dollars. You know, what is my model as a principal interest tax and insurance? You know, if I don't have any debts. So you're looking at you just take the forty-five percent of your income. That will be the mortgage that you are able to qualify on if you don't have any debts. Now, if you have debts, so you add your mortgage payment plus your debt, it cannot exceed 45% of your gross earnings. All right. Sorry. Oh. Those are the little things that you could think of. In that way, you have a little bit of an idea. Because some people come to me and say, Diane, I make $3,000. I want to purchase a home for $500,000. Obviously, you're not going to qualify, right? So oh. it, all, it, it, it is all relative. So again, we are still doing loans. I am really, really very busy with refis right now because, because the rates are still low. Rates are still low. Just like what I said, I'm quoting, I just quoted a 3% interest rate on this client, okay? So on Jumbo the other day, I was trying to find a good, conforming to standards of anime, pretty much. Uh, what was that question, Chrissy? Yeah, uh, Kathy was asking. Okay, I was just that? replying to uh, somebody. Okay. Well, Kathy has okay. a yeah, let Kathy talk. Yeah, because yes, to... I have like I have a million questions. Um, I've clearly been doing research for a couple months. Um, yeah. As Chrissy knows, I've been doing research for about a year, um, and we're still a little <laughs> way. Away. Yes, um, but I do my research. Um, when sorry, when you said the debt to income at forty five percent, that's a conforming loan. Yes. So that's when I'm looking at like the sub seven sixty five. Yes, yes. And that's based off of my total income per month. I'm just like restating this. Yes, to make yes. So you take your total income gross, okay? Because most people uh -huh. say, oh, I only net $2,000. The, the lender doesn't take your net uh, uh, income. They take your gross. So you take uh -huh. your, this is looking at a employee, all right? So I don't mm -hmm. know, Kathy, if you're self-employed that you're t getting 1099. So those are, an that's another subject that we have to talk about because if you are a self-employed, are you self-employed or W-2? No, no, not self-employed. Good, good. So the W-2 are easier to qualify. That's most lenders love those. Those are the cream, you know, those are the cream uh, uh, loans. So if you're straight W-2 and you work for two years, same, the same, you use your gross salary every month and you just multiply it by 45%, that would, that would be your model for the mortgage. And that's, they, so that's the most, the 45% is the most that they will lend to. Yes, 45% net to income, yes. How do they incorporate stock and bonus? Okay. Into you have to be taking that you have to be okay the stocks if you're getting dividends i have clients that are getting dividends. um not dividends um and it's not employee purchase it's like part of the compensation package okay so it gets uh it's, is it taxable yes okay you are if, if you're getting it's just like the same as bonus and commission correct yeah yeah so yeah. the way that they pay us at least my stock is very much like it is yes. basically Yes, so Amazon, I think, does that too, because I just have a loan uh, with a girl with uh, uh, works at Amazon and had, they have a stock, uh, uh, she's earning something with her, with her stocks and it's, it's in her paycheck. So if you have a history of getting that for, two, for the last two years and it, it is consistent and it's it consistent to your pay stuff, you take that into consideration. That's income. Awesome. Okay, cool. That's helpful. That would help you. That would help you out. Now, the lower your debt to income ratio on a jumbo, anything above 765, you gotta understand if, if so the, the 45 is the max DTI that they're looking at. Mm -hmm. If you have anything lower than that, you get a better pricing. Okay, you get an, you know, so for example, you come to me and say, Dan, I'm doing a jumbo, I have a 45 debt to income. So you get like, you know, 3.8, for example, but now your ratios drop to like 43 or 40%, you get a better rate. So that's something that I did not see before COVID. All right, it's weird. But now they're, they're giving incentive to people that has lower debt to income ratio because of the ability to repay the mortgage. And can I ask a question on debt to income ratio? Or somebody else had a question, I'll let them go. Go ahead. So I was just uh, trying to ask, you know, is the minimum down for Jumbo is still 10%? Yes, yes. There is, the other day, some, somebody just came up and said that there's a 5%, but I looked at the guidelines and you can't even get it. You know, it's like, really? You know, ratios are this, you have to be this, you have you know, research and all that. Well, you know, the reason why it's 5% is because people are saying, oh, I, they need 24 months reserve and all that. So wait a minute. Yeah, and the rates is not very attractive. So let's do a 10% on the jumbo, yes. I mm -hmm. could do up to 2 million, a 10% down payment. Up to 2 million at the yes. moment. That's because my max right now. I can't do anything about 2 million. You were saying that it was like 1.5 max. 
I, I had I, my maximum before was 1.5. What happened is they had changed the guidelines, but okay. 1.5 in house. Now they we have an investor that would do two, up to two million. Okay, it's good to know. Okay, and then sir, when you said debt to income ratio, um, so uh, one question I had, and this this might be um, slightly, not, it's not really debt, but it's like I have credit cards that either I don't use or they have a higher like they have a substantially higher balance than yeah, I will ever. Good, yeah, that's a good question, Kathy, right? That's a good question because you know how sometimes American Express, let's do an American, you know, American Express actually, it's a revolving 30 day, 30 day, right? So I have a borrower that had a $10,000 uh, balance. And then according to the credit report, the monthly payment is $10,000, right? So what we do is this, okay, what would you take, you, you give me a mortgage state, you give me a statement, a credit card statement. So most people would pay more in their credit cards, right? If, if it's a revolving, right? So, so your question is, so what if my credit card is zero balance, Diane, right? Is that what your question is? So that debt is not going to be, because it's zero, there's no payment. If it's not reported on the credit report that there's a payment, okay, then that means you don't owe, right? It's zero. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's a balance and does not show a monthly payment, Okay, so all we have to do is you have to provide a, a credit card statement and it will tell there, it will say there what your monthly payment would be. And that's what the lender is going to use. Okay, because sometimes the credit card does not show a monthly payment on a revolving, uh, the credit report does not show a monthly payment on a revolving credit card sometimes, especially American Express. Um, so, so does so that sorry, answer your question? No, so my question is actually, I... Like my credit card per month is maybe $2,000, um, but my balance, like what I could spend up to, it's not an American Express. I don't touch American Express because it just gets me into trouble. Um, my my uh, visa goes up to like 33000 Okay. I'm never going to spend that kind of money. Of Do I lower, should I lower that? Because that also is like a, an amount of money that I've borrowed or I could borrow, right? Okay. But you're only using two thousand dollars of the thirty-three, right? That's good because that's the the, the rule of thumb is if you have your your usable uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, debt, okay, has to only be thirty percent of the high balance. So if you have a thirty-three thousand dollar high balance, you're allowed to use it up to thirty percent. Got oh. it. So like, but like credit cards that I don't even touch, like ones that I opened years ago that I should probably just close. Should I close them now? Oh, or is that don't leave, no. it, leave it there okay. because that's how the, that's how they score you is the length of time that you have your your uh, your credit. So don't, just leave it on because I have the same. I have like five six that are that are not close, but it's still there because it helps you with your FICA score. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Anything Any else? Questions? You know, you want to raise before we move on to the next slides. You know, people questions. Nope. Good. So don't forget to use the group chat, you know, to drop your question. So I know this slide is about, you know, showing. So uh, showing lately, it's actually a little bit more challenging than before. Definitely, you know, Chrissy and I experienced it. Uh, for tenant occupied, owner occupied properties, it's definitely a lot harder and it's not advisable to even show right now. So we can definitely show vacant properties. If you see something that you want to uh, take a look at, if you are pre-approved, you know, let us know so we can show a vacant property without problems, but you just need to sign some forms. So that's all you need to do. Okay, so next slide. Okay. So, Chrissy, you want to continue on the, uh, the pending sales is de declining? Yeah, this is kind of another uh, measure of what's happening in the market right now. So this is just showing that the pending sales are declining. So less homes are going into escrow, um, which shows a contraction in the market. Okay. Okay. Any other questions about the market or, um, yeah. uh, you know, please raise questions. Uh, 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 Diane, I actually have a question for you. I know there are some investors here, or potential investors that want to buy investment property. Is it hard to get a loan for investment property right now? Well, no, no. Loans are loans. You know, loans are you know all relative to your needs. Just like what you said, you just have to fit in a box. So if you're an investor right now, again, you got to remember the minimum down payment on an investment is 20, 25 percent single right. family. Now, if you're going to units, now it gets expensive. So you, that's all you have to know. Plus, when you say first-time investors, right? Is that what you're saying? First-time uh, investor. So if you are first-time investors, you know, you got to have to remember that, of course, you have to have a 720 or better FICO. Okay, that's what you have to work on. You need reserves. 
They always want you to have reserves. What it means is when we close escrow, whatever the PITI, principal interest tax and insurance of your property that you're buying, you have to have at least 12 months. Okay, of okay. that after we close escrow, after you close with your down payment and your closing costs. So oh. those are the, the, the only things that you have to think about. And the rates are actually higher, of course, you know, because of the risk. Oh. Uh, I, I haven't actually priced any investment loans at the moment right now. You know, most of my clients are all owner occupied, so I don't know what they are. Um, it's basically about a half to three quarters of what the single, what the owner occupied loans are. So if we are at three percent, for example, on that property that that I just quoted today, uh, you're probably going to be at four. Okay, on owner occupied, oh, no, not owner occupied. Okay. I have questions about a reserve because in the past, you know, I know I, I, I got quoted for something like up to eight months reserve. Is it, did they recently change it to, to 12 months? Yes, yes. Um, COVID, the recent first, if you're buying a house right now, you got to be an essential worker. All right. Um, and we have to be able to verify that day that we're funding the loan. We have one the other day that I could not verify. Nobody is picking up the phone. Oh, that's we got to call the manager, make sure that, or they can email from their work that they're working, right? So because of COVID, they increase every single uh, requirement. It used to be eight months, now they want 12. Okay, okay. sometimes they will require 24, depending on, on, on what they feel like it sometimes, or depending on the investors. So what mm -hmm. happened is most lenders, I don't know if you guys know, so um, like Finance of America, okay, we, have, uh, we sell our loans. See, if I close a loan this month, for example, some of them we service. When we say we service, that means we use our own money to actually keep that in our portfolio. But most of the time we sell it to the secondary market. So we sell it to our investors and those investors, sometimes they have uh, different criteria. I can't sell this uh, loan to uh, this investor because they require 24 months and I only have 12 months reserve, for example. Or this one, oh, this one I could sell it here because they only require six months reserve. Oh, good. So those are different uh, uh, um, uh, questions or different uh, uh, scenarios that we have to face. So when you come to a lender, okay, that's why it's, that's why we do all these classes. And that way you're you're you know you're a little bit uh, educated and what you're going to be facing. So you just don't come to a realtor and say, I want to buy that home. And then the realtor, first thing that they're going to ask you, have you talked to a lender yet? Oh, no, I don't, but I've done my research. So, well, researching is good. It is good. But again, we always tell our students, well, you guys are clients, that every situation is unique to your uh, 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 um, standard. For example, you know, you haven't been working, you have your furloughed. For example, for the first, right now you're furloughed, you're not working, you know, do I, can I get a loan, Diane? You know, so it's all relative, okay, to, um, to, to your situation. So again, there are, we're still doing loans. There's lenders that are doing loans and we are doing loans. So if you have anything, if you're scared, if there's a property like this client that actually called me today, was not supposed to write an offer, they're writing today. I pre-qualified them about six months ago and they're back and they're buying four unit. So they are still actively you know, and they found this property and they say, Diane, I think I'm going to write an offer. So again, you know, Kathy, you're saying, oh, Diane, I'm not ready. You might find something that's a deal. This property that they found is a deal because the rents are way more than what their mortgage are. I cannot believe I, you know, I saw that property when they sent it to me and I saw the realtor, you better write today because that property is going to be snatched. So you, you, sometimes you still get, you know, <clears throat> the properties that are still good buy. Okay. And if you're able to buy and you think that you are, you have the money to buy right now, but you're holding off, you know what, trust me guys, this is the best time because the rates are still low, especially if you're owner occupied. Mm. Okay, people, any questions for Diane in terms of the loans? You know, speak up or type it in your, the chat room. I was gonna say, you said this, the rates are still low, time to buy, totally makes sense. Yes. How soon do we expect them to go up? Sorry, you know, that's, that is a good question, Kathy. You know, I've been a lender too long and, and I've been asked that many times. I do not have a crystal ball. You know, I didn't, you know, who would, who would know that we're going to have this pandemic again? You know, um, I was very scared and I'll tell you honestly, because when in 2008 though, Kathy, and I, you know, the only thing that I know is, is loans. I was, I did not have a paycheck for at least a year, nothing. 
Okay. So I was scared when this COVID came up, I was actually very scared of myself. I said, oh, I'm going to go bankrupt this time because last time I had some savings that I had to put up. So I do not have any idea. But the beauty of this is people, uh, there's still lenders out there. So we're still doing those. So we don't know when it's going to go up though. Uh, um, I think they're going to keep it low. It's because there are still buyers that want to buy. Get this. Do you know that um, I'm Filipino? Okay. And uh, my, my clients, I live in the San Fernando Valley, in Granada Hills. And most of my clients, when I started real estate, all my clients are Filipinos and Hispanics. Filipinos are almost 90% nurses. All right. <laughs> Do you know that my clients, about six, seven months ago before the COVID, right? My clients that are under FHA loans cannot get their offers through at all. Cannot get it because we were competing with people from Hollywood. You know, we're competing with people that are, have so much money, foreign money. Do you know that when COVID came in, I had five purchases from my six month old uh, 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 borrowers that are our ends, okay? That <laughs> got their offer accepted. So I believe, I truly believe that they're going to keep it, you know, the way it is right now with low interest rate because they want to help these people. People still have, you know, people that are, are uh, uh, that need to buy, have to buy, right? So I still have a lot of those. I did a lot of prequels and they're in my pipeline. So again, when it's there, when you see a deal, for example, I would grab it though, you know, because the rates are still low. So would you rather buy a property that has a higher interest rate, but the property is lower? I think it's the other way around. What do you think, Chrissy? In your experience, Chrissy, most people would get a property, you know, with a lower interest rate. That's what, that has been my experience, though. I'm yeah. always, always busy when the rates are low, versus the properties being being uh, versus the rates being higher. Mm -hmm. You know, I've only been in this business with low rates. I exactly. mean, I got in in '04, and rates have been at the floor for so incredibly long. I. Yeah, it's, it is hard to predict as far as interest rates. And yes. it seems like they're down because of the bonds. And I mean, there's so much, that whole financial side of it, I don't understand, but that has something to do with something, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's based on, it's, uh, the interest rates are based on bonds. So if, the, if people yeah. are putting money, so right now, do you, know, do you know where they're putting their money in? Okay, they're, they're pulling in cash, right? Huh? Isn't everybody pulling to cash right now? Well, yeah, what they're doing is they, right now, well, this is the problem. We pulled money out of the stock market, right? Because right. it was actually losing a lot of money. Okay, and it started to build up. When the stock market is high, you'll see the interest rate low. Mm -hmm. All right? So that's what happened. Because people are actually putting money, okay, in bonds, okay? And that, and that way the interest rate will remain low. Okay, if the bonds, okay, if people are pulling money from bonds, we got no money, right? Then that means they have to raise the interest rate. So now because the stock market is getting better, people are buying bonds, okay, as an investment because they know that people are still doing loans. So that's your key. Wow. Do you think, Diane, it, you know, the rate would some days go back to the tools, the high tools? Well, you know what? <laughs> the, do you know that 15-year fix is very close to a 2%? On a conforming, very, very close to a 2%. Okay. You will not believe it. Wow. 15 year fix, I'm sorry. 15 year fix, you guys. If you do a conforming, I'm looking at two and a half right now. A conforming 510,400 loan amount. Okay. So if somebody wants to buy that area, it's weird because I am getting uh, uh, pre approvals on properties that are in the San Bernardino County. Okay. I don't know why. Okay. People are buying over there. <laughs> um, Rancho Cucamonga, Rialto, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You know, it's just weird, but but it is it is what it is. Okay. It's probably because of price point, exactly. right? I exactly. mean, people are moving out there. They they can get a nice three bedroom house in a good neighborhood for four fifty five hundred. Yeah. So I want to share with you guys, okay? Uh, just just for information, there are three uh, criteria how to determine interest rate, how you are affected by the rate. The first is the size of your down payment, okay? Second is your FICO. And the third is the type of property. Those are the three, uh, 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 three items that will actually affect your FICO score or your interest rate. And that way you know. Because somebody will come to me and say, well, she's getting a 3%, okay? And then, well, what is she buying? You know, what is her FICO score? 
you know, what's a down payment. So those are the three items. So you cannot compare, you know, just, Kathy, it's good that you, you do all the research. Sometimes you get confused because it's conflicting, right? It's conflicting. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Diane, I just read this and then now this. So what is the real one? Well, you don't, you will not know the exact truth until you are actually applying for a loan yourself. Okay. Sorry, can you repeat that one more time? The three were the FICO score, the down payment, what was the other one? And the, and the type of property. Yeah. Can you explain? Also, oh, like if it's an investment or if it's a- Yes, uh, exactly. So yeah. now, now the type of properties are, just, just so, so you guys know, there are no townhomes, please. Okay, people will come to me and say, I'm buying a townhome. No. Okay, we, the lenders will go with what the title is. So if the title is showing a condo, because there are some single family homes that are condo, trust me. You see that a lot because the builders that build homes, especially in Santa Clarita right now, these homes are actually detached. But because it's cheaper to get title insurance when you have a condominium as your use, uh, as, the, as, as the land use, okay, on title. Okay, so just be careful. So people will come and say, Dan, I'm buying a single family, I'm, I'm buying this home and I'm putting 3% down. What's my rate? I said, well, is the home really a single family home? So those are, okay, what is a townhome code for? There is no code for a townhome, <laughs> that's the problem. Because. If you go to the title reports, there's only three things. Either you get a, a condominium, single family, or multi-units. Those are the only three things that you'll see on the title. Report. So just to real quick, a townhome typically is like a three-story condo. I mean, it's something where you're paying, you're paying a, a monthly HOA due versus condos typically are like an apartment style they look, but townhomes tend to have three levels or two levels. Or sometimes it's attached. Sometimes yeah, it's detached. Attached. Your, your garage is attached. They used to live in a townhome before. So those are the yeah. three things, Kathy. So, so sometimes, you know, uh, there's a lot of condos in, um, again, in, some, in, in uh, Valencia right now, TriPoint. I'm doing loans at TriPoint right now where it's a single family home, but I have to price it as a condo because across the board though, Kathy and everybody else that is looking at con across the board, it's not only me, it's not only Finance of America. Every single lender has a three quarter hit on the rate if your property is a condo. So it tends to be a higher uh, uh, interest rate than what you're gonna get in a single family home. Now, since we're talking about condos, if you're only allowed to do an FHA loan and you are only an FHA borrower because of your FICO, you can buy up to 765. But if you say, Diane, I found a condo for 600,000 and I'm FHA, that condo complex, if you're doing an FHA, must be FHA approved. If it's not an FHA approved, we, any lender cannot lend on it, okay? Yeah. So those are the little, little things that are, that's why I said, again, guys, every single, you guys, every single borrower is unique to their situation. So that's why we have these classes. Okay, okay I just want to add on a little bit because Tracy just now talked about the tri-level thing. I just don't want to confuse you guys. There are now some small lot single family homes. There are tri-levels, you know, don't get it confused. They're actually really single family home with HOA as well. But, you know, just make sure double check whether it's a single family home or it's a, it's a condo. And, uh, um, Oh, okay. Sorry. I, I lost the train of thoughts either. <laughs> it's the kind Anybody of, else? oh, and I want to talk about the FHA condo situation. If you are not sure if the property is actually uh, FHA approved, you can either talk to me or Chrissy's and Diane actually has a way to check it too. There's actually a website out there that can mm -hmm. check, but a lot of people don't know how to use the HUD website to check whether that, uh, that condo is FHA approved. If it's not approved, it's very troublesome. You know, there sometimes they would post like reasons why that building is not FHA approved. Yeah. So, yeah. You know. yeah. So, uh, it, to, it, in short, to get uh, to buy a condo with FHA is a little bit challenging in Los Angeles. So, okay. yeah, it's a lot easier with a conventional loan or cash. <laughs> I have a question. Okay, Kelly. Yes, I have a question. Um, when it comes to the loans, if you are a investor they're buying a single family property or if you buying multi-family properties right. um do the same ratio applies when it comes to the 25 percent to the uh, to the down and the 12 months that you had to have extra after closing costs and all that is the same ratio if it's a single property or a multi-family property yeah 
the ratios are going to be the same, but you know what? That is a totally good question, though, Chelly, because on a um, on an investment property, okay, the debt to income ratio cannot exceed forty percent, whether it's a single family, multi unit, and all that. So I'm glad that you asked that question. Yes, it is cannot exceed forty percent. Cannot exceed forty percent. Yes, Dutch. but the, the beauty of it is, of course, if it's a rental, right? Now you can use the rent of the property, you take 25% of it as an income for you to qualify. All right, so which is good. Thank you for that question. But I have question a question. Follow up. Oh, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead, Chris. Chris? I just wanted to follow up on that one question. So so you said uh, you can use the rent um, against, uh, now does that only stand for uh, properties that have already been rented or would that, would could you get some sort of projection for- Yeah, that's a good question. That is a good question. Thank you for asking that. Okay. So for example, yes, you're right. If the property is not on a um, rent control, okay, and the rent's still low and you're buying that home, let's say a single family though that you're buying and then the rent, there's a rent control and it was only $1,500. But rent control is tough, right? Because you cannot use a future. What would be the future of that uh, rent? Plus if there's an existing tenant already there, you actually inherit whatever the rent of that uh, tenant is. Now, that is on a rent control. We can't touch that, meaning it's going to be whatever it is. So you single, might. Yeah, and real quick, single family is is not under rent control. Oh, it never. I didn't. No, know. no, no, no. Good. Yeah. Okay. So Good. for a duplex. Good. Okay. Yeah. So on a single family, and the rent is four thousand dollars, and the tenant is staying there at four thousand dollars. I think you could increase, Chrissy, when you sell when you sell an investment, can you increase 5% if you're a new owner on a single family home? Yes. Oh, you can? Okay. Yeah, there's no rent control. Okay, so what, for example, he's buying a home, a single family home and as an investor and the rent is 4,000. Okay, the lender will take the rent of 4,000, you take 75% of that, that would help you qualify for the loan. Now, because there's an existing rent right now, we can't use the future rent though, that's a thing. You know, that's your question, right? I think that was your question. Now, if this, if the property is vacant and there's no tenant yet, yes, we're going to use whatever is the market uh, rent for that at the time that we purchase the home. And you take 75% of that because the appraisals will do a rent survey. Okay. okay so now, it's, a rent, it's a rental appraisal. Yes. Yes. So they take 75% of that. They take the 75% because they want to use the 25% as a, uh, as a uh, vacancy factor. Okay, so we can't use the full 100% of the rent, only 75. And that's across the board, that's industry guideline. So uh, currently that's no non-QM product, correct, Diane? Yes, yes. So do you guys, have you heard of, of, of a non-QM? It's non-quality mortgage loans. These are same as the subprime loans in 2008 before the fall of 2008. So uh, um, the non-QM loans, I used to be able to do a loan for somebody that's just self-employed and just give me profit and loss statement. That's it, that's all I need. And somebody will just give me one month bank statement, I'll be able to do a loan, you know? Or somebody will just do a verification of employment, just a form, no pay stub, no taxes, nothing. So that we can't do them anymore. So basically they cannot use a profit and loss statement to get a, a loan for a income property at the moment. So do you think it'll come back in, a, in the next two or three months? You know what? Um, uh, they're starting, there's one uh, uh, investor that came up and saying that they're going to do 12 months bank statement, right? So I tried to price a loan with them and the interest rates are nowhere where we used to do them. So, so they're probably just not going to be available probably I would say about another year or two before they could relax again with those guidelines you know and um, just to tell you guys uh, before this COVID you know we have in my branch we had over 10 million loans that are non-QM that did not close this has all loan documents they already signed it and were ready to fund it and it did not fund so um, so that's how bad it was Okay, but of course, these are the non-QM, these are the non-traditional loans, but the Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac are still doing loans. Those did not stop. Okay, it's just they just tighten up the, the conditions, you know, the guidelines, but we're still doing it. Okay, but uh, in terms of the reserve, you, you know, do you think that there are some lenders that are willing to do less than 12 months? 
There are, yeah, of course, of course. So what they do is they weigh everything, right? So they're going to look at it and say, okay, if your FICA score is above what's required, okay, mm -hmm. I'll take eight months. Okay. You know, or I'll take three. So this one that I just did today, it's a four unit, right? And it's only requiring me to put three months. Because oh. DU will give you that, that option. That's why we run DU now all the time anyway. And it will tell you how much reserves is required. And then uh, in terms of the loan process, do you think that we need to uh, run the underwriting process like, before you close? Well, yeah. Well, this is the problem, okay? My pre-approvals right now, thank you, Cindy, for asking that. Um, I'm a direct lender, guys, okay? What it means is my underwriter actually sits next to me in my office, in the branch, and anytime I need to a question, he would, you know, she would just you know, give me an answer immediately. Because of COVID, remember, I can't go to the office and I work from home. And then the underwriter also works from home. So I am able to still do a loan for 21 days. If your loan is cream of the crop, okay, then, you know, you're, you're, you're two years employed with the W-2, money's not gift and all that, and it's all fit in a box. But mm -hmm. I cannot do a TBD, meaning if you come to me and do a pre-approval, for example, and say, Diane, can you pre-approve me? I can still do uh, that pre-approval, but I cannot do it in 24, 48 hours. That file is going to sit in my underwriter's desk for probably at least five days. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion, if you guys are ready to purchase in the next 120 days, for example, we, we got to get your loan pre-approved. We have to wait one week. Okay. <laughs> and, and to make sure that the underwriter sees it first before you, before we get you in the, um, in the game before you have you write an offer. Now, if your loan is easy, like yesterday, the other day, I was doing a prequel for Cindy's, uh, for Chris's client, and I just have to talk to the underwriter for 20 minutes. I was just showing her something, and she said, okay, Diane, you're good. You know, she didn't have to see the whole picture, but she saw what I was concerned about on the loan. That helped. So now I told Chrissy, go ahead and find her him a home. You know, stuff like that. But again, everything is unique. Just send me your, your pre-approvals, and I'll work as fast as I can. Yeah. What about foreigners? Because, you know, we do have some foreign buyers here. So uh, do they really need to have a green card or work permit or card in order to get a loan? Well, right now I can't do a foreign national loan at all. There are no investors that would purchase them. Okay. So what about they are working in the U.S., you know, but, uh, but they're, you know, but they don't have a green card yet. Would it be a problem? Yes. Okay. Now, remember, we, I just got an approval on one of our clients right now from, from HomePoint. There's only one lender that would do a loan. If you don't have a, um, a work authorization, okay, that's valid for two years, mm -hmm. okay, in this COVID, okay, in this situation right now where we are, there's only one lender that will do your loan. Okay, that FHA gave us that lender, so we're working that lender right now. Now, uh, if you have a visa, an O2 visa, yes, you're able to, you know, to uh, to buy buy a property uh, under FHA or conventional. Not jumbo though. Jumbo will not take anybody. You have to be either a green card holder or you have to be a citizen. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Somebody so let me clarify. Yeah, Diane, I want to clarify something with you just to make sure I got this correct. When you're talking about 45% is your max, debt that's debt referring debt. to how much debt you have, right? It's how much debt payments debt. are is 45% so that they can use 55% to yes. cover your mortgage insurance and property taxes. Exactly. Exactly. Um, okay. And are you, does that include car insurance count no. towards that 45%? No, what counts only, towards that? No. Okay. That's a good question though, because some, they, they, because this are liability, these are bills, right? These are the only liability that will be taken against you guys are the ones that are reported on your credit report. Okay. That's a key now, but if you have a child support, okay. Or if you have, if you owe the IRS, Okay, those are liability that will be taken against you when you qualify for a home mortgage. Okay, so child support, any uh, uh, um, debt to the IRS that is monthly, anything that's federal debt, of course, a student loan, you know, even if the student loan are in deferment, okay, we'll take automatically, the lender takes 1% of whatever your balance owing, or if you could get something from the student loan company saying that your payment is only $200 for a $10,000 or for a hundred thousand dollar student loan, then we'll take that. Okay. So those are, but your utility bills, your car insurance, it's not, it's not counted as a liability against you when you purchase a property. 
and sorry, I, um, I might just be confusing myself at this point. So the 45% is the debt you have. The 55% is what your, your mortgage, your tax and your insurance could take up. Is that pre-tax or post-tax when I'm looking at my paychecks? That's pre-tax. Remember gross. I uh, remember I told you, you got to take your wow. gross. Yeah. yeah. Gross. Gross okay. is what the lenders are using. Okay. Okay. So they're, they're basically assuming that you have no expenses outside of. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Like, I don't need food. <laughs> I don't need. <laughs> yeah, got it. it's true. It's true. So it's kind of weird that most people tell me, but Diane, how could you qualify me with this? And I'm, my take home is that. I said, well, we're taking your gross. And that's always been the case. Every, <laughs> since I started doing loans, it is always the gross income is what we use. Okay. Then if, if you have no debt at all, you don't owe nothing, no student loans, no car payment, no none of that. And uh, so your ratio is still 40%. And if your credit score is over 700, how does that work? It will, it will still be the same ratios or you use different ways or what? Well, your ratio is your ratio, right? So, um, uh, so you rephrase the question. So if you are, did you say, are you talking about an investment purchase, for example, right? And yeah. For an investment property, uh, so an investment, if you have no debt at all, okay. you don't have nothing, and your credit score is over 700. 40%. Um, okay. Yeah, 40%. Right. So now I understand. Yeah, so you're still going to have to be a, a debt to income. I have, uh, Cindy, do you have that uh, matrix that I gave you when, on our original? Because they will show you some payments there. Right. Do you have that or no? I do. No, that, uh, show them the, this is the one, you guys, we should email this to them, that way they see the payment. These are samples of principal and interest payments, depending on the loan amount. So this is it, look. Right. This would be a good uh, tool for you guys. Cindy, we should send it to them. See, no, if, you look, if you look at it, it will tell you what your loan amount is, and then if you go across, you know, if the rate is 3%, that will show you your principal and interest. See, now you could count. Now, let me tell you. So this is only principal and interest, right? What else is in your monthly payment for the house? You have property taxes. Write this down because I might give you a test so you could win the prize, okay? <laughs> so your mortgage has taxes. four, it's divided into four. Your principal and interest, okay, which is here on the table. You could calculate that. The taxes in California, property taxes are based on purchase price multiplied by 1.25%, okay? So that way you could calculate it for yourself if you, you know, if you want to. Now, the next item on your, proper, on your monthly payment is your homeowner insurance, fire insurance, which is hazard. Mm -hmm. So that is depending on, on your insurance, you know, how much you wanna get. But there's a guideline to a, a fire insurance. Most lenders will take 0.25% of the loan amount divided by 12. That will be your monthly. That's only a guesstimate. That's what we normally use. You could get your own fire insurance from AAA, whoever you are using for your car. If you buy a house and you have a car, they can bundle it and you get a discount. Okay. And the next item on that, because if you're putting less than 20% down, there's mortgage insurance associated with that. Problem with mortgage insurance is you cannot calculate it because mortgage insurance is all relative to all these factors. Your down payment, your FICO, and your, um, and your uh, type of property. So if for calculation purposes, and you said, I wanna put 10% down, Diane, I don't know what do I calculate for mortgage insurance, so at least I know how much my monthly payment for, my, for this property, so calculate, 0.35% of the loan amount divided by 12, that will be your monthly. So those are the four things that are, uh, are included in your payment. It's called P-I-T-I, -I, Principal Interest Tax and Insurance. Sorry, quick question on that. Um, I have been told that you could possibly do, if you qualify for it, you could do an 80-10-10. Yes. Um, and that that would, the, therefore you don't have the PMI? Yes, yes, yes. Um, how does that work and how do you qualify okay. for that? The second, okay, I'm glad that you answered that question because most of the time that's what right now is very popular because they want to keep it to a, 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 a 500, 10, 400, okay? Loan amount to get the better interest rate and not a high balance. So what they do is this, so you, let's say you're buying a million dollar home, okay? And you have a 10% a, a, a down. So you piggyback. 
It's called the piggyback loan. It's a home equity line of credit, actually. The second, the, the, the rates on those are about 5.99, okay, depending on your FICO, depending on the day, because it varies, and it's an adjustable. But when you qualify on that, it, we're going to qualify you for a fully app. So it is a different lender that does that. So for example, you apply through me, Finance of America, we'll do your first, and we will go to the, the popular uh, um, uh, lender for HELOC is Symmetry and TCF. Those are the best uh, uh, lenders out there that does a piggyback loan uh, um, uh, over a, um, a, um, a first, you know, to, to be a, a, in a second position over a first loan. So you take your loan amount, what they do is you're gonna have an 80% first, okay? So for example, you're gonna have an 800,000, okay? And then you have a $10,000, $100,000 second, and then $100,000 coming from you. So that's how it works. Now, it's a little tricky though, um, uh, Kathy, because the, uh, the qualifying is totally different. Okay, the ratios now changes. Now, we, if you qualify with a second, now they want the ratio to be a 38, okay? Because now there's a second position. Now the, the loan becomes riskier because now there's a second position lender behind a first. So it's all relative, but yes, it can be done, okay? Because again, you know, I'm glad that Kathy asked that question because, uh, on the mortgage insurance because if you make $120,000 income, okay? The mortgage insurance, you cannot deduct it from your interest every time you, you file your taxes every year. So it's a non, uh, you cannot, it's a non-deductible anymore. It used to be before, okay, regardless of your income. But if you make anything over 120, your mortgage insurance is out the door. It's just like paying rent, okay? I have a question about the deductions related to that. So uh, with the new tax law, my understanding is that they, they cap, before it was kind of more or less unlimited, maybe up to a couple of million, how much you could deduct in terms of your, um, your interest from your loan on, in your taxes. Is it true now it's at seven, 750 or something is the cap and, and so you can that, get it. You know what, that um, you know what? I don't know, are you talking about uh, as far as when you file your taxes, how much deductions you can take? From the yeah, mortgage. basically, how much does the government subsidize your loan? <laughs> I, oh, yeah. Well, the, I don't, it all depends on your tax bracket, I think. Okay, so for example, I know for a fact that every single mortgage that you pay, except mortgage insurance, is 100% deduct. You just, I think your question is if there's too much, right? So if they, they will, because I know they take 100%, because, you know, I, I have a mortgage too, and my CPA just finished our, our taxes. The, all the mortgage that we have paid, actually, they took it. 100% of that was a write-off, okay? So I don't know about, you know, I don't know how to answer your question about the max that the government is now limited, though. I, Are you talking yeah, about- Yeah, that's from the new tax the, law. Is I, that I, the new one? Yeah, I think he's asking for the mortgage interest, you know, how much can you deduct up to, you know? The question. I think- Are would, you talking about up to your certain income? No, not so up to a certain income. The property value, basically. Oh, I, they know, did the tax the tax laws that they just changed in 2017. They t took away a lot of deductions and things like that, yeah. which had to do with local taxes. And yeah, so I'm pretty sure that that's what he's referring to because okay. I know that you can only deduct a certain amount of interest. Actually, that might be related to interest and not PMI. Not the P that the mortgage insurance. Yeah, right? in interest. That's right. Yeah, I, mean. I think it's like ten thousand or something. I, okay. Yeah, I can't remember now. Yeah, I, the, the CPA would be able to answer that question. Yeah. They have those laws, you know, and, um, and I'm sure, you know, I know they're changing. And, and guess with all the money that they're printing right now, you know, I don't know how much taxes they're gonna, we, have to, we have to pay, right? <laughs> this money, it's not free, right? The money that we're getting yeah. is not free, and I didn't even get anything, okay? I have a client <laughs> that called me and said, Diane, I just got my $1,200, and good for you. <laughs> Hey guys, I just want to, I just want to share this with you. Um, um, you know, um, I, I, you know, I've been a lender too long and, and right after this COVID, I understand that some people are really not working though. So I don't know what you guys are situation are. Is any of you here in, in the call had owned a property before or you, this are, you are all first time buyers. Anybody? I have property. <laughs> As Shelly, you own a property before or you own a property now? She owns a property. You are a homeowner, right? 
Okay. So I just want to share with you. I have, you know, again, just, I told you that I, I, I'm an R, you know, I, I, I do loans for RNs a lot, right? So six months ago, I, I closed probably like two or four of my clients that are registered nurse. And I know that they're working. Okay. <laughs> he called me a day after, okay, COVID came in. I, you cannot, I cannot imagine. They, they're, all four of them called me and said, Diane, can I stop making the payment on April? Oh, I was really actually upset because I think we, you, you know, being a citizen, we have to be responsible. If you guys stop making the mortgage, we can't do mortgage anymore, right? No, we can do it. No. Can do no. it. You know, Shelly is, is, is agreeing with me. And I told her, I said, how dare you? I flat out told them, I said, how dare you? Do you know that these nurses are getting paid $150 per hour now? And they're getting a bonus of $25,000 after, after this, okay? After this happened. And I understand that it's hard work for them because my cousin actually is in the hospital right now. She, he's, an, he's an RN, works for convalescent. He's, he's not intubated, but, but it's in ICU, okay? Because he got infected because there's a, there's a breakout over at the convalescent home where he was working. And I, I can feel that. But we have a responsibility. That's why the lend, lending is very important. Real estate and lending, you know, you guys, I want to, sh if our industry collapses, everybody else is going to collapse. So we got to protect it, right? So, so, so my, my thing is I just got upset because people have to think, you know, these things you don't want to make. Are you out of job? You're not. You're working. Yeah, I can understand if you're out of job, right? So there are some legitimate people that would call me and say, Diane, my business is suffering. I'm out of job. You know, I said, that's great. So yes, you can apply for forbearance. But for that's why it's called forbearance, right? Guess what can happen? If we forbear, if, if you apply for forbearance or you're approved for three months, after that three months that you haven't paid, at the end of the year, you're going to have to pay those all three months with interest. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I, I, I put already. You know, paying the house, paying the bills and uh, food. Those are my priorities right now. Amen. You know, Shelly, I, I commend you because I'm telling you, you know, we got to protect our, our industry. The real estate and the, and the lending is what actually drives our economy. Would you agree to that, everyone? Yeah. 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 Because if there's real estate, there's people that are going to do construction. There's people that have to clean. People have to do staging. People have to, you know, there's financial. No mm. Everything revolves about buying a home. You know, what, what is everybody doing right now in their home? Is, aren't you fixing your home, improving it, <laughs> weeding, planting, right? There you go. <laughs> well, you're ready to sell your home, Shelly, and all of this and buy a new. Um, okay. I have a question about gift <laughs> Uh, investors, you want to get some gift funds in order to buy the income property. How does it work? No, you can't. Scratch it out of you. You can't be an investor and getting a gift. Sorry, Cindy. Mm. Can it be a co-investor? So it has to be no, both. No, you can't. Well, you have to be an investor. So if I have two borrowers, one doesn't have money and the other one has, perfect. <laughs> but you have to be a borrower. You have to have your own money. You can't get a gift. That's a non, non, non issue. At all, you can't, you know, because uh, then everybody else wants to do it. Then you become a straw buyer, right? Because you don't really have the money. So, what if the uh, the other investor is actually not a U.S. citizen? Can buy. Sorry, you're gonna have to find out that money somewhere. <laughs> you're gonna have to give them the money, okay, and then buy it after 90 days. So, again, guys, since we're talking about funds, so if you're getting a gift, okay. If you're thinking of buying a home in the next 120 days and you're getting a gift, make sure that we can document where that money is coming from, okay? Don't just put cash in your bank account today and tell Chrissy and Cindy I'm buying a home next month and I have $200,000, how did you get it? Oh, it's cash. No. So the money must be seasoned, okay, for at least two cycles of the bank statements. Okay. So so, that if the other investor, let's say I give the money to, I mean, I'm talking about gift funds for the in income property. What if that person actually give, um, I mean, the, the income property buyer, the funds like, you know, 90 days ahead of time. So there can, you go. Yeah. So, but you can, you cannot, you have to be in escrow in the money season. Okay. So don't, we cannot, you know, we cannot, uh, 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 how do you say that? Uh, um, do it ahead of time. So if, if you have an investor that doesn't have money and the money is just deposited now, Wait 90 days, two cycles, then we can buy. Guys, keep that money. 90 days, you know, make sure you get the money in. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. Anything else? 
Uh, to answer Chris, your question, yes, you know, the limit is actually $750,000 of the mortgage. You're right. Chris? That is right. Oh, good. Mm. There you go. Yeah. So, Anything right. else, guys? Anything else that you want to ask? Hey, David, I cannot hear you. You need to unmute. Hey, David, are you talking? Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Okay, great. And I don't know whether the, how the timing on this is. Want to answer it now or defer it? Um, you know, sometime off in the future, I I would like to have some kind of income property. I think you know where I am now and my career and all this stuff. Most likely, you know, in the foreseeable future, it would be a you know a bargain basement, just starter home, just you know for me to occupy. Um, how does one go about converting into a rental property, or is that all about zoning? Oh, Chrissy. Converting, what do you mean? Converting a property into a rental property or? Yeah, you know, if, if I buy like a single family house or a small, you know, even a, you know, just a two person house, is there, um, what are the rules around, you know, getting that just to live in and then down the road when I it. have the, the skill of owning and maintaining a house under my belt, then going and renting it out to people? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty easy. It's not, um, yeah, there's really not much to it. You just, once you're ready, I think you'd want to stay for two years because I think you get a homeowner's exemption if you decide to sell in three or four years. Um, but other than that, I think you can pretty much rent it out within a year. You can even rent out rooms, you know, it's pretty, well, it's pretty straightforward. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, and I've been told it's not that hard to do if, you know, if, if you, mm -hmm been occupying it and know what you're doing, maintaining a, a living space. Um, I think what threw me was earlier, they were talking about different types of loans and that, you know, it's the, the loans are um, categorized and, you know, the, in strict categories about, you know, investment property, single family home, all this stuff and how, you know, how it's, um, what's the, is there some kind of conversion process when somebody decides to make it into an investment property? You should answer that question. Yeah, let's say I bought it as owner occupy. I lived there for two years and, you know, do I need to inform you if I turn this into an income property and rent it out uh, entirely? Is like that the question? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Well, with the loan, if you buy it owner occupied and within two years you're renting it out, I don't think that's an issue with the loan. I don't think you necessarily have to refi, Diane. Do no, you? You don't have to. Yeah. It doesn't, okay. Remember, I told you guys I have some prop. I have a, a husband and wife that bought a home in Sherman Oaks and got divorced two months later. Oh God. Now they had to rent out the home. Oh no. Yeah. Wow. Right. So, but if you buy it and you oh, rent it within six months, because it's different loans, right? When you buy it as an owner occupied, your interest rate is better than if you buy it in an investment. But if you buy it as an owner occupant and you rent it out in six months, then that could be an issue, right? No, For the lender? no, it doesn't. It, there are, no, um, it will, I know what you're saying. Some, some people will be afraid to say, Diane, I just bought this. Well, this, the best example is the divorcee, these people that got divorced. Bought a home in Sherman Oaks, they fought. And two months later, they called me and said, we have, we're divorcing. We can't sell the home because they just bought it, right? Can we rent it out? Of course you can. Okay. Yeah. Of course you can now. Yeah. Because we're not going to call your loan due because you got divorced, you know, right. yeah. because you bought it as owner occupied. So there are, not unless it's premeditated. Let, let's say, oh, I'm buying this as owner off, but I'm really renting it out. Well, don't tell me that, right? I don't want to <laughs> know it, right? Don't tell me that because I'll do your loan as owner off because you don't have a property. How do I know what you what the use of it, right? Now, there are some instances that the lender will actually knock on your door. They, they, they do a, a, uh, a investigation, right? If they suspect that that's what you're doing really, they will only suspect that if you own, if you have a property. So, for example, okay, you have a condominium in West Hollywood, okay, that you're living in right now, and you found a home in Van Nuys, single family home in Van Nuys, and you say, Diane, I would like to occupy the home because single family. It makes sense, right? From a yeah. condo to a single family home, it makes sense because I'm coming out of a condo. I'm tired of going to a building. However, the area West Hollywood is better than Van Nuys. But then I work in West Hollywood, right? Okay. <laughs> Guess what's going to happen? We'll give you a loan on ONOC, okay, because you will qualify. We can't deny if you present it this way. Say, listen, I have a one-bedroom condo, and now I have a, and my family's coming. I'm getting married, whatever, whatever your reason is. 
the lender will just want to get a motivation. I'll get you that home in Van Nuys. And then you'll see on the condition, they will say that they have, there, there's, I forgot the name, what the condition is, but they will say that uh, um, inspection, an in, uh, owner occupied inspection after close. It's a surprise. So it, it, it sounds like the name of the game is transparency. It's, exactly. There you go. Yeah. Once you're, that, and anytime you're renting it out to other people, that's an upgrade in the inspections that need to be done. If you're paying higher interest rates. Everything yeah. gets more serious and more, there's more risk that has to be managed. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, yeah. so just in terms in, of my, it's, it's, it's in both my personal interest, probably financial interest and experiential interest. Um, to just hang on to something for two years and it out. owning my own place. Yeah. But, um, as far as, as lenders and, and government entities and inspectors are considered are concerned, uh, they just need to know at each step of the process what the property is being used for. And then exactly, I'm exactly. There's, there's, you know, you're right. You got to be transparent. You yeah. know, but some people take advantage. You know, I have some people that say, you know, that never own a home and bought a four unit, they never occupied a four unit. I know what they're doing, you know what I mean? You know, but uh, <laughs> you don't, you, you, there, there's no police that actually will knock on your door and say, I'm gonna arrest you because you, you, you know, they have to prove that you're actually did, did not occupy the property, correct? So yeah. again, if, if you do not have a home right now, for example, and you found a four unit home and your intention is, you know, I think I could do this as a rental, of course you can, but, but how we protect ourselves is there's a four unit, for example, that you want and you don't own a home at all, right? They said, Dan, I want to buy this. I said, okay. And there's one unit and all units are occupied, for example. So what's going to happen is the lender is going to condition is saying that one unit must be vacated. Okay. For you. Oh, to really? Own. I have to, I would have to kick people out of there yes. to qualify yes. for the loan? Yes. yes. So that wow. was the condition. One unit has to be vacated to prove that you are going to occupy the home. Because some people will use other people, okay, that never own a home, you know. I've seen that before, trust me. I've seen people will say, you know, can you buy this home for me, you know, and I'll give you the down payment and all that because you've never owned a home. You have good credit, you're qualified. So what then how we protect ourselves is, yes, we're going to put there on the condition that one unit must be vacated for our buyers to occupy because it's an, it's an owner-occupied home loan. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, if you're going to, if, if yes. you're planning on moving in, then that's, that's yes, exactly. you're going to have to kick them out anyway. Yep. Um, yes, sir. Thing, I th oh, okay, I may have some follow-up questions. Let's see if others have questions, and I, but that, that's helpful, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? You know, uh, Kathy, Jasmine, anybody? No, no. I mean, numbers-wise, this was super helpful in terms of loans, like I looked at it and I was like, okay, so if my, in terms of debt, what I have, so my Verizon and my gym that I put on my credit card, those are going straight to debit card. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's a debt that I don't actually need. <laughs> so that was super helpful. The numbers were awesome. Thank you. Okay. Actually, so to follow up on that. So, so when you were saying it's, it's 45% debt to income on a monthly basis, right? So what, like whatever your credit card payment is, is it, do you just take the minimum monthly payment? Yeah, you take the minimum, you take the minimum monthly payment, yeah. Okay, okay, so it's it's, it, it's not a total debt to no. annual no. income. It's oh, it's the, the, it's the minimum? The minimum you could pay. Yes, okay. it's a minimum. So the credit report will tell you that, right? So we, we go up what the credit report is reporting. So if you have a $10,000 balance and the monthly payment is $25 reported, we take $25. Okay, so, if, and if there's no monthly payment there, then that's when we ask you for a mortgage, uh, for a, a, a statement, credit card statement, okay? And then once you have that, then um, then uh, um, we'll use that. Yep, there you go, Cindy. I like that. You you get that? that. Okay, so this slide is about, you know, what kind of product, I mean, what kind of documents you need to prepare in order to get, uh, to apply for a loan. So you definitely, you know, people who's working for someone, you know, getting a W-2. So make sure that you have your W-2 ready, uh, pay stubs, bank statements, you know, if you're gonna, if you're self-employed, you know, your tax returns, you know, those are typicals. And uh, what else do we uh, looking for ID typical? And yeah, uh, California ID and on, uh, on FHA, they would like to see the social security card and the California ID, mm -hmm. okay. but on a conventional only the ID. Mm -hmm. 
Any questions about what kind of documents you need to prepare since we're talking about a uh, conventional loan and maybe FHA? So since we cannot quite do non-QM, so we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, we're not. We're not. It's all full doc now. Okay. Anybody else? Any question? Okay. I I had another thing I wanted. Oh, okay. Maybe, okay. maybe you finish the slideshow and then I can. No, yeah, no, go ahead. Ask the questions. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's right for the, the time in this presentation, but um, how are people who might want to have income property in the future changing their calculus for, you know, all these, I and mean, this is not going to be the only quarantine we have to sit through. There's no way. Um, you know, how are they changing their calculus for, um, you know, future times when they may have tenants who just can't pay because a lot of people are losing their jobs all the time. You know, I don't know. I have, you know, I have a lot of investors that I actually did loans for last year and they are units though, David, and um, uh, a couple of their tenants are not, bu are not buying a home, are not, are not paying their rent. So they yeah. have to ask me and, and say, Diane, they're not paying. What do I do? I said, that's a good question. I don't know because, because remember our governor said that you, you know, you don't have to pay your rent, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> kidding me right so okay don't you don't have to pay your rent you're not going to be kicked out but you know they don't understand that th these people have mortgages too so i think you're just gonna i think that's why lending is taking only 75 percent of the rent income remember mm. the vacancy factor so i guess that you're supposed to actually save that 25 percent okay so if you yeah. have a thousand dollar rent okay 75 uh uh, uh um uh, 750 of that goes to the mortgage and then you keep the 250, I guess you have to say, you know, because you can't have the government, you know, bail you out on this one. I don't know how they're going to do it. There's yeah. no money. Oh, it's the money's gone. I have people that are self, that are small business. They don't have, they gave so many millions of dollars to Ruth Chris. Did you hear that? Yes. 150 million, I think they gave to Ruth Chris. Yeah. You know, restaurant that, that, uh, that, um, that restaurants, I don't know. So. Yeah, so I think David, you're just. Um, I think being an investor, you know, if you want to purchase a uh, a, a unit or something, or being a, a landlord, right? I think it takes a lot of you know uh, courage and it takes a lot yeah. of discipline. I think this um, is the best, right? Yeah, and I would also say that I think investors are looking at this. Uh, as an opportunity to save more in the future yeah. and to have more reserve. I think that's definitely what people, what I think that's the calculus that's going to change for a lot of investors because I think most investors are the money that they, that comes in from the rents pays other things, yes. you know? So I think that's probably going to change. So oh, I have a question for you, Diane. So did you actually get any calls from investors that are talking about asking for a loan forbearance? No, not the investors. Well, they were asking me, what do I do? Again, that uh, this, uh, this client of mine, you know, I did three, four loans with them and they're all units, right? And yeah, they, they, they're asking for forbearance. So I told them to go ahead and call their lenders, right? And then they said they couldn't get anything, any, they cannot get anybody to respond to them. So because the banks are overwhelmed, you know, do you think the, the, the banks are, this is what's going to happen. They're going to look at the single family, they're going to look at the owner occupied first. Okay, because those are the ones that are going to lose the home. The investors are going to be looked at later on. So I don't know how far this this lenders have looked at you know, their portfolio. Look at which one is is actually which one is actually the person that we're going to help. Yeah, so they, we don't know that. So I, you know, I told them I have somebody that asked me, uh, uh, emailed me and said, Diane, the rates like I gave him a rate of like four and a half or something. I said I could do a three point one two five. Why don't we refi? I'll save you two months mortgage. You know, that's the only way I could do it. But you know, he's working. You know, so no, I don't. You know, I, I actually do not have anybody that I know that actually already is approved with a forbearance. I, not yet. Not yet. Wow. <laughs> because you know, like in the city of LA, the uh, the rent can basically delay for the next twelve months. You know, so I'm just wondering in terms of the. Uh, uh, from the landlord or uh, uh, investor perspective, how do you deal with this this kind of situation? Yeah, I don't. I, I really don't know. I have one property that's being rented, and uh, she's in a she's in a medical field, so she's working. So I'm happy about that. I get I, my mortgage is paid. So that's about it. You know, I have three students from China that pays my rent. <laughs> <laughs> I have to shut my door. Hang on. <laughs> All right. 
you All right. have any other questions, you know, that I did not cover because, you know, I, I know some of you, so I know how to ask um, some of the questions to Diane. So if I did not cover some of the questions, you can put it we wrap up this session. Okay, Charlie, you have something? No? Okay. Anybody? Hey, Cindy, huh? this is what we're going to do. I have, let's do three thirty dollars Let's do four $30 gift cards. All oh, right? Wow. <laughs> let's do that because we have 18. It looks like there's what, 11? How many do we have uh, right now? How many people do we have? One, uh, basically, not too many. One, two, three, four. Well, 11 minus three. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give four $30 gift cards, okay? American Express gift cards. You could purchase whatever you want. I'll, uh, it's an it's a e card, so I'll send it to your email. I have three questions. Uh, four. I'm going to ask you four questions. Cindy, do you have any questions that you want? So whoever can answer it correctly, we'll get that. That's how we're going to do the raffle. How's that, guys? Yay. Cindy, you wanna, so I'll have Cindy give one question, Chrissy one, and I'll have the two. Ready? Okay. Diane, you go ahead first. Okay. My question is, I need you to give me all three loan amounts that the lenders are using right now as a model to do all three different loans. So you can put it in a chat, okay? And, and uh, we'll see who, who has the right answers. That's a tough one. <laughs> what is the conforming? What is a high balance? What's are you the kidding? Are you, no cheating, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> You already gave them the answers. So I need you to give me the loan amounts, though. I need, need, oh, look. Okay, Who's Chris? They don't <laughs> okay. okay, Kathy. Okay, let me see. Okay, I, I can't see all those, though. So how do I see the chats? Okay, so Chris is talking. Okay, you just need to hit on. Uh, let me turn off the stop sharing. So let's go to the chat. I want to see the chats. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you have a little chat uh, bar. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Hang on. Hang on. All right. Okay. Have you, time's up. Have you answered? Everybody answered? We're done? Only two answers. Is anybody else answering or we're all done? Sorry. Misunderstood the question. Are you looking at the max amount or the minimum yes. amount? I want the maximum amount on the conforming, maximum amount on the high balance, and my maximum amount on jumbo. I already gave you the three. Okay. Ready? One minute. <laughs> Come one on. minute, guys. Thirty dollars is thirty dollars. That's one meal, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're giving out four of those. Okay, you get it? Are you? Let me know when you're done, and it's a final answer. Okay, <laughs> final answer. Has everybody answered or nobody's responding? No, I think it's a hard question. Amounts. I don't know. You guys yeah. wasn't taking my notes, right? I told you what they are. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> right. uh, okay, let's do this. Okay, so we have uh, Chris? okay. Chris, it says 520761.2. Kathy said 516, 765.2 mil. Uh Kathy, did you say, I think the first one is wrong? The five. <laughs> yeah, that was, I like, I wasn't paying attention to that one. Um. You can change it. I'm going to have you change one figure. I didn't like that. I it's mean, real. can I take Chris's at 720? Okay. Or, or five, uh, sorry, at 520? Right. So, if I take it at 520? Israel is 515, 585, and 2 mil, right? Okay, that's it. What about the rest of the people? Come on, guys. All right. Let me show you. Let me, the answer is. So then whoever ah. closes, right? 510, 400 is the first uh, loan amount. 765 is the second, and 2 million is correct. All right? Yeah. So now, yeah. Cindy, you tell me which one is closer. Five, I have 510, 400, five, 765, and 2 mil. Obviously, the 2 million is Israel and Kathy. I think Kathy <laughs> is closer because. And, no, Kathy got it. Yeah. Because 2 million, 765, and 516 is close to 510. Is anybody close to that? Okay, let me see. 1.2. So should we say it is? Because Israel is actually 785 on the second tier and 515 on the first. It's at 785. What do you think, guys? Who won? Cindy, you pick. 
I think that Kathy actually wants All right. It. So Kathy, I need your email. Okay, make sure you uh, give it to Cindy so we can send you the gift card. Okay, right. Kathy will go first. Okay. Yay. Okay, next. Cindy, question. Okay, so my question. Hmm. This is I ask you guys. So um, the types of loan program out there. Oh, you want only two types of loan program? Yeah, to, to make to make life make easier. easier. Okay, go ahead. Anything. Two types of loan program. Okay. Ah! <laughs> She's quick. <laughs> Wow, this one is trouble, Cindy. Are you giving out three? <laughs> you okay, you know what? Add one more in. Sorry. It's got to be in order of who came in first, right? That's right. So, actually, Amanda actually won. Okay, all right. We'll give it to Amanda. Okay, Amanda gets a second $30. Cindy. Okay, so we have Amanda, we have Kathy. Kathy. Mm -hmm. Cindy, your question. Okay. Oh, Chrissy. Chrissy, my question is, because um, it's important, this is an important one, how long does it take for sellers to reduce their prices after there's a shock to the system? I like that. Ooh. There you go. <laughs> ah, that's for David. <laughs> David? All right, David. Perfect. All right. That's it. Now, last question. Cindy, do you want to, uh, Chrissy, you have another one? No. That's really, okay. Oh, this is tough. <laughs> I need you, okay, tell me the debt to income ratio that is required for a owner occupied and a non owner occupied property. So you have to have, give me two answers. Two answers, don't miss it. Be the first person who gives two. Yes, exactly. So I want the non-owner op and the uh, the mm. owner op. What was I? I gave mm. you I gave you actual three figures, but there's only actually two. Well, Kathy's correct on that, but that's not. Uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> there, so there's only actually two owner op and non-owner. Soyan, you're close. You just need to add one more number, Soyan. <laughs> <laughs> what about um? Shelly, Shelly knows because Shelly asked me this question. But I use with my internet and I'm using Ooh. a tablet. I'm sorry. That's why I haven't answered any of them. By the time I try, it's too late. <laughs> so I haven't seen any two numbers yet for the debt to income mm -hmm. ratio. We have the owner off and non owner. It's Kathy's right on the 38, but that's a jumbo though. Okay. It's jumbo. So we're looking at it. We're looking at Okay. Okay. Not. Not quite. The, not the, quite. Not owner rock and non owner rock numbers are quite close. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Shelly, mm -hmm. what's your answer, Shelly? Hey, just call me. Internet doesn't work. Oh. My tablet is horrible. <laughs> Poor thing. All right, what is it? Nobody else? We'll try it. I so Jan, is that right? Four, 45 and 38? Yeah, so, so it actually, okay, so are you guys done? Oh, Ooh. Shelly, yeah, Shelly okay. got the correct answer. Okay, so what happened is 30, 38 <laughs> for Jumbo, okay? So, uh, so Jan is actually correct, 45, 38, but that's a Jumbo, but in a conforming up to high balance is 40, 45, because 40 is for, uh, for non-owner, okay, remember, and 45 is for owner off. So sh uh, the 38 is actually for an owner off on a Jumbo. Sorry, <laughs> so we have Shelly. All right. Yay. All right. So I have four gift cards I'm going to send out today. So Cindy, go ahead and... and uh, it's gonna be an e uh, um, an e card. It's gonna be sent to your email. All you have to do is print it and use the barcodes, and um, and that's it. Anybody else? So I uh... yay. <laughs> hey, Kathy, Amanda, David, and Shelly. All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You know, guys. Oh, um, thanks, guys. Your class is amazing. I have learned a lot today, and I really appreciate you guys took the time to do this class. It's, it's amazing what you can learn in a couple, yeah. 
you know, of ours. Um, of ours. But I mean, seriously, everybody asks the best questions and yeah. we got the best answers. And I really appreciate every single one of you guys and your time and everything that you guys brought in to this meeting. It was really good. Before Thank you, you. Know, I want to do a, uh, ask a quick question. So what do you want us to cover next time? That's right. Yeah. What, what kind of topics? I mean, how soon are you thinking next time? Because if it's like three to six months from now, like showing the comparison to what was now and what is in three to seven months. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, no, it's going to be, I think we're doing this monthly, right? Next month. Yeah, oh, I was gonna say yeah. like next month we're not gonna see as many, and we'll well, guess we're gonna not see a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're not. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're still in lockdown next month. Exactly, I, that's what I think too. March fifteenth, May fifteenth. Yeah. Right? So, any other yes. topics you want us to cover? Because we're we probably gonna do June. We'll mm -hmm. we'll do June. Mm -hmm. We can do any okay. good. You know, you know, from investments to owner occupy, from the ADUs, structured engineers, you know, whatever. Just give us a topic, you know. Well, that's good. See, what to look for for your first home. You know, remember the to be strategic. I think we had that class before. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What to look for. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other topics, you know, just text it and then or e email it to me. I will send a group email after Please. this hour so that at least you know, uh, you know, how to reach out to us. Yes. And then, oh. Uh, for those who want to get the PowerPoint slides, you know, I can actually attach it into the because in the PowerPoint slides, it has some, some of the basic statistics information as well as uh, Diane's uh, flyers. Yeah, there you go. The monthly payments, those are good. Yes. Yes, please send it. Send it to Cindy. Yeah. I want that. Yeah, those are good information. Okay, so I, I took a lot of notes, but not everything. <laughs> Okay, I think Jasmine want to know about the neighborhoods, you know, so we can talk about neighborhoods next yeah. time, you know, where's a good uh, location to yeah. buy. Okay, so that will be good. Any other things, you know, just let, let us know. All right, so see you guys next month. Okay, I'll see you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Bye.